Well, I mean, I think from a financial perspective, what, what people are, you know, what the, the street and investors are particularly concerned about is just how fast legacy TV advertising declines in the face of customer declines to the sort of wider pay TV ecosystem. And then, you know, every, as you said, as we've talked about at the conference every week, there's a new press release about new, the sort of promise of addressable TV advertising. Um, and the extent to which the growth in addressable, you know, which is embryonic at the moment, can offset some of the wider legacy declines. Um, and I think, you know, from a sort of street perspective, there's, an all, there's not a lot of information to go on. We're presented with a, you know, an aggregate advertising revenue number for the content owners, um, as, well as, some of the, as well as the distributors, um, which obviously hides an awful lot of complexity. Um, we have, you know, sound bitey press releases released from various organizations and Comcast and Viacom today is just one in a long, long list of um, plausible sounding press releases about the promise of addressable advertising, um, which I don't think has been yet proven to the, to the street, you know, in terms of how much it can offset legacy declines. So I think that the whole area is interesting because there is clearly in the background enormous growth um, from Netflix, um, 125 million subs and 10 billion plus of cash investment in content. Um, and that's presenting huge challenges. Um, and it sparked the wave of mergers that we've seen in the US and it's, it's sparking an enormous amount more collaboration um, amongst European broadcasters, um, which sounds great, but then we're presented with a slide that suggests that digital advertising is broken and it's enormously complex. and the intersection between the supply side and the demand side is complicated and there's different systems. Um, so from my perspective, the, you know, the, the conference has been about trying to cut through some of the noise and try and understand the real world issues with, with driving addressable TV advertising. I think the investment community, when it sees a wave of, of US media mergers, and, and mergers have been a, a feature of certainly the, the US and European media landscape for years, but, but the, the pace at which they've occurred over the last few years is, is, you know, is interesting and it's a function of QE and it's a function of cheap money, but it's also a function of the growth of Netflix and this you know, huge change in the dynamic um, where you've created the digital advertising duopoly. Um, we're seeing customer numbers on linear platforms decline and the incumbent players are consolidating. Um, I mean, if it's discovery scripts, it's about scale. You know, similarly with AT&T and Time Warner, um, you know, a vertical merger that's being challenged by the, by the DOJ right now. But again, you know, that the premise for that is accessing customer data to develop, develop better addressable advertising solutions. Whether you believe that or not depends on your view on AT&T and whether this is just a deal um, using cheap debt to, to cover dividends. Um, but Disney Fox is a much more, you know, easier deal to understand about buying in production capabilities, buying new cable networks, FX and Nat Geo to fill out their direct to consumer offers. Um, so I think that the, the street, the financial community is always, you know, skeptical on, you know, a rash of merger announcement because the implication is there's something around the corner that's not yet visible in financial results that's coming, whether it be a downturn in advertising revenues, and acceleration in customer losses. Um, so this is, you know, that's the potentially the concern that, that we've seen such a, a slew of merger announcements over the last um, couple of years. Um, conversely, I think that it, it gives a company like Disney the opportunity to, from a consumer perspective, turbocharge the launch of over-the-top direct-to-consumer offers, um, turbocharge Hulu put some real investment and content behind it to allow it to go up against Netflix. Um, and from a consumer perspective, that's cheaper, um, particularly in the US, pay TV, you know, average pay TV bills over $100. You're comparing that to Netflix at $11 now and Disney, when it launches on, you know, will be a similar, you know, a similar price uh, level. Um, so there are hugely much cheaper alternatives for the consumer, which could be accelerated through some of the mergers that have been announced. Um, so I think, to summarise, it's, it's concern over the near term, but there's clearly the potential to produce better uh, consumer solutions on over the top uh, longer term and better addressable advertising solutions, um, although you know, the addressable advertising solutions will take time.